Hello, welcome to Black Paint. I'm going to show you how to make some cool assets, and we'll start with just a basic brush here. I'm going to press backspace to clear everything. Hold down S and move left and right, and I can make this basic brush kind of a different size. Right, I want to click this bottom one so it only uses this tone, and I'm just going to go back to the base palette and choose white. Right, I'm just going to draw. It doesn't matter what layer I'm in, but I'm just going to draw a kind of leaf shape. Now that's a bit noisy, so I'm going to just turn down the rotational range. Uh, no scatter, no size variation, and just make that a bit smaller there, and make a nicer leaf shape, right? Something like that, maybe, and just color it all in. Just fill it in. Maybe just a little branch. Right, so I've done that, and I'm going to lock the pixels. That's what this does. There's the alpha lock, and I'm going to choose black. And I'm going to press 5 for half opacity, and it's going to start kind of going over this. I'll make the brush quite big. Right, I'm just going to do Alt and click to color pick. Let's press 3 for a little less opacity, similar to Photoshop. Right, and just make this kind of a nice grayscale looking thing. Maybe a little highlight the edge there. Uh, I can even press 2 and do a little kind of highlight here. Right, something like that. So that's our leaf shape. Maybe a little bit here as well. That's our leaf shape, and what we do is we capture it. So I've got this capture current layer only in case that I've got anything in these other layers. So this is only going to capture this. So I capture the shape and then backspace to clear what I was working on. But now you can see this has turned into a brush and it's actually added it somewhere. It's added it here, right? And if I hold down S and move left and right, I can change the size. I can use E and R to rotate it. Or I can basically ro uh, random rotate it. So this. Um, but what I want to do is put the opacity back up, uh, no opacity by pressure, so I get the full colour of that. And you can see I'm basically painting in white, so it's white multiplied by the base colours of, you know, what I made there. Okay, you can see it's also doing flippy x. Flippy x just randomises if it's going to be flipping x or you know, the way that it's been made. So you can see they're all pointing the same way. Right, but what I want to do is choose this and then choose two colors and it's basically going to multiply the image by this blue or this blue or somewhere in between like one of these kind of gradients and I get all these little variations. Right, but you don't really want to stop there. If you click this one, it actually analyzes the grayscale and it replaces the dark with this tone and the light with this tone. So if I press W, I can swap that and you can see now it's going to look cool. So I can choose two tones for that leaf, reverse them by pressing W. So let's say I wanted that. Right, now the, the axis for this is sitting in the middle of the brush. I want to move it so the axis down the bottom. So I've got this little gizmo here and I can click this a few times till it goes to the bottom. Right, so now it's sitting at the bottom. I can do rotate with a brush. So I can do this kind of thing. Ooh, and make cool flowers. Uh, so yeah, let's make a kind of pinkish, fiery brush. Right, and if I put that flippy X on, I'll get even more variation. And I can basically make, basically make up new brushes with this. So I've just made up a new brush. All I need to do is grab it. Just grab that, and that's me got another brush. And I can, you know, can draw with that. I can do things like size variation. Uh, let me put the spacing up so you can see what's happening. Let's do no opacity by pressure. And you can dot that around. You can also do X scale range. So you can make it look flat. And X scale 
range that's for randomization uh, x scale and x scale run so they're kind of because the size variation is actually affecting that it just looks the same um, but yeah you can make some nice flowers and because this has kind of got some grayscale in it i can go here and actually tell it to use two different tones it's not as strong because i used color right but what i can do is i can click here and choose like yellow and like light blue right and this is going to basically multiply the base tone so you get all these different sort of things happening it's kind of cool It gives you loads of variation there. I'm going to go back to the brush that I just made this one, right? And you can see I can just make stuff up. It's basically randomizing between these two tones, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to put that down. And instead of it like going with the brush rotation, I'll just switch that off and make it do rotational range, which is just going to randomize the whole 360 here. And I can do these little patterns. Choose a couple of colors. Let's choose some very obvious leafy colors like this. And I'm noticing the dark is a bit too dark for what we want. I guess we could use this mode and it will just multiply them. And W give us that. So that's not too bad, right? Two quite strong colors. There's other palettes here that you can use. So I could go for a dark color and a light color like that and make up some new bushes. Let's just make a nice little bushy shape. And it also gets affected by pen pressure. So the harder I lean, the bigger they are. And if I use this ninja brushing, if I move really quickly, I can make them really big as well. If I move slower, it will do smaller ones. So it's a good way of getting that pen pressure if you don't have a tablet then you can use the mouse mode and then you just use the speed All right you can do scattering i'm going to go into this one so i can vary between two nice green tones yeah these are quite dark so i'm going to take this brush again and draw just with white in this mode so it only uses white uh, tunnel for rotational range and everything else uh, some spacing and I just want to stamp one down so the stamp is here scale that up and just stamp it down right it did reverse it but that's okay there you go if you're fussy take the scatter down right and what I can do I can just can brighten it up a bit. I can brighten it up a couple of ways. I can use this mode and choose the darkest tone as like make it lighter. So when I stamp down, it's now a brighter grey. And that means it'll be a bit better to draw with. So I'm going to capture that. And then I'll offset it again. So I want to go up the way. Not down the way, actually. Keep tapping until it gets to the point where you want it to pivot from. All right, and then back to this mode. Okay, then I can kind of make something with that.
So that's the grayscale replace mode is this third one, and this one is the shuffle between two tones, which I think I like better. You can see what it does by picking some of these tones and it's basically multiplying the white with any one of these and the, the you know it's basically a colored grayscale version but it's mixing between two tones and you get so much more variation with that you can do a nice blue tree let's add some this might be better for showing at christmas time but there we go we've got some decoration and we can grab our little flower brush here and we can Dot some of them around. Some size variation. Can even make it so it rotates. Can dot them around the side like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, can make a whole brush thing with this. Do like a dragon uh, I'm not too sure how the dragon goes but let's do something like that it's almost like far And I guess if you wanted to darken this down in any area, you just use the lock and then you could go into like that mode and swap each color out with some dark tones. So it's basically going to replace it with dark tones and press two for some less opacity. And then you can kind of paint some shadow in. And if you hold down, F with some bright colors. Sorry, if you press, used to be F. It's now this one. Uh, you can brighten it. It's been a while since I used that. Oh, yeah, a bit too much. Yeah, it's ugly. Takes a while to get used to. It. But yeah, I've just been making up assets like this one. You can see we can make up some little bushy scene by changing some scales, taking a bit of rotation, lots of size variation. And if you want perspective, you can click this and choose your vanishing point. And build up a scene like that. Little field. If you want some tonal variation, just click this one and choose you know the two sort of tones you want to mix it with. So we can say white and brown. Gives us that. blue and brown as long as you keep those tones quite bright it was quite nice feels kind of natural to look at as well and you can use layers as well if you want just build it up use the crazy parallax mode where are you uh, yeah it's just for fun kind of 3D effect, which uh, looks at all the layers. Like if I start with this layer, and I think as you go further up, yeah, that moves more. So this, the bottom one doesn't move very much, so you can add like the sky in there. Oops, wrong one. And then you could add your, uh, that would actually be your background. So you can do like a little background thing, turn the perspective off, 
and choose a couple of tones. Let's actually use that mode. I'm just using the shape. I can add some howls into the background like that. And as you come closer to the foreground, you can pick a couple of tones and start to mix that in. And let's just pick something a bit darker. And you're getting closer to the foreground, that kind of distant, foggy perspective. W to mix it up a bit. And they also have a, they almost have a kind of Ghibli aesthetic to them. Build up this little scene, and I guess like each time I want to make it look closer, I just go to a layer above, and I also add a little bit more contrast. Let's go for that one. It's much more contrast than that. And if I choose parallax mode, I can do this little kind of parallax effect. That's just for fun. That's quite nice, making, making little trees. Uh, what size by pressure? Size by pressure, that's what we want. So we can really make uh, some interesting shapes and if I do the rotation a bit more spacing See if you if you can get good at this, it'd be it's quite cool to see you know what people make with it. Um, it's quite interesting the results that you get. It is quite toyish compared to Photoshop, or you know Photoshop a bit bland. This is much more interesting, I find. So it's free. You can get it from Itch and ArtStation. And now and again, I'll do little changes to it, but I quite like the way it is now. You know, it's so easy to make trees. And then even more in the foreground, let's do some really contrasted. Uh, so that's mixing between those two, isn't it? Let's go for that, there we go. And then turn this one off. And if I do the parallax effect, you see it's like in the multi layered. Let's put a sun in the sky. Let's turn that off now. And I'm just going to choose a sunny brush. This one will do. I think that's got multiple things, but that's okay. I'll just use that and start drawing. It's not showing up because it's behind this. There we go. The sun, and if I press one, I'll get a little bit of opacity in there. Do a little glow. So there you go, there's black paint in a nutshell. And the next little effect, you can press H to hide the UI and we can just see whatever we painted. It does look a bit kind of flat and cardboardy until you layer up more layers, but for now it's just for fun. I hope you enjoy watching that video and yeah, I hope you enjoy using black paint. Thanks for watching, bye.